And this is a mistake a lot of people don't even know they're making. This guy could be really good. Have you ever felt like you're not improving or you're constantly losing games that you know you could win? Well, in this video, we're going to analyse five of our subscribers playing badminton. And if you answered yes to either of those questions, our advice will hopefully help you. So let's get straight into it. So first up, we have Singh from Australia. And this is from the Australian National Championships and he's playing the eventual winner. Now, Singh is obviously a high level player, but there are two things that he can improve on that are going to be relevant to a lot of you out there, whether you're playing singles or doubles. Yeah, the first thing is his choice to play cross court shots on his round the head side when he's under pressure. So, because his opponent has played a lift, it's really difficult for Singh to hit around the shuttle to play a good quality cross court reverse slice as he doesn't have much time. He actually did this a few times, and each time he was put under even more pressure because his shot quality wasn't very good so his opponent could take it earlier and then he also has to travel the longest distance on the court. So let's show you what he could do instead. Yeah, so instead of choosing to play this cross court slice, he could have played a straight slice down the line. This would have been easier and made his opponent take it later and not expose these big gaps on the court. The second thing Singh can improve on is his deception. Now we're big fans of deception and Singh has some great skills, but in this rally, he hits eight shots from the front of the court and six of those were deceptive shots. Yeah, this isn't great because if you're playing this many deceptive shots, they're going to be much less effective because your opponent knows the rhythm of your shots. And what we mean by this is that if your opponents know that you're going to swing once and then actually hit the shot, then they can delay their movement and they're therefore not going to be deceived, like in this situation. So instead, if you're playing eight shots in the front court in one rally, we'd advise trying one, maybe two deceptive shots, because when you do play these, as long as they look the same as your other shots, they'll be a lot more effective. Okay, let's move on to Dow from the USA, who's in the light blue t-shirt. And what we saw Dow doing is something we saw happen a lot in the other clips our subscribers sent in to us. And this is making the wrong shot selection in the mid court. If we slow this rally down, you can see that Dow is hitting the shuttle from slightly below the height of the net and he hits the shuttle hard and in an upwards direction and this is the one shot his opponent was waiting for. He got away with it this time, but if he was playing against a better opponent, he probably wouldn't have done. Yeah, so if you're in a similar position to Dow here, there are two shots that would have been much more effective. The first option is a soft shot, either straight or to the middle, if there wasn't a danger of hitting his partner on the head. Hitting to the middle would have forced his opponent to turn and take the shot or late, and also caused confusion between his opponents, resulting in them either being later to the shot or just not getting it at all. And the second option is to actually play a lift over the opponent's head to here. As you can see, Dow's opponent is stood quite close into the front line, so if he lifted to the back, then that's a long way for this guy to move. Yeah, this scenario actually happened again a few rallies later, but on the forehand side. Again, Dow hit this shot hard when he was below the height of the net, but a soft shot to the middle would have set up his attack very nicely. And this is what we can all learn from Dow. Shot selection is so important. Dow has great attacking shots, so he needs to think about how he can set these up rather than trying to win the rally as quickly as possible. All right, let's move on to our third clip, which is a men's doubles match from Singapore. And this was sent in to us by Yong. Now the biggest mistake we saw Yong making is defending in a forehand grip. And this is a mistake a lot of people don't even know they're making. Now you might be thinking, he stood on the cross court and he's covering the middle, so he should be in a forehand grip. But we wouldn't advise doing this from this position. It's great that Yong is covering the middle, as this is something that we see a lot of players not doing. But the way Yong is standing exposes so many gaps on the court. So let's show you what we mean. So if I'm defending on the cross court here and I'm stood like Yong was, and Greg smashes cross court from a similar position, then I have almost no chance of getting it because I have no time to change to a backhand grip. Instead, I have to use my wrist to try and generate some power to at least get the shuttle over the net, but it's not very good. Whereas, if I'm stood in the same position again, but this time in a backhand grip, then it's easier to quickly change to a bevel grip for any shot coming to this side. And anything closer, you can use a backhand grip like this. And if they do smash across you, it's much easier. We'll just caveat this, as if you've seen your opponent isn't in a good position when smashing, you might step forwards with your racket up. And here, it's okay to be in a forehand grip, as it's a lot easier to change grips from this position. So if you struggle to defend when you're stood on the cross court, then this technical point will hopefully help you. And our next clip is also about defense, but this is another tactical point. So let's sit down and watch it. So here we have Zach from England, who's in the red top. 
Now, Zach was generally in a good defensive position throughout the rally, but he was just way too defensive. Yes, yeah, so from positions like this, where he's below the height of the net, he hit nine lifts and only one net shot. And especially in men's doubles, this is too many lifts, as he's giving the attack to his opponents too easily. Obviously, he's taking the shuttle below the height of the net, so he can't be too aggressive. But some good options of shots Zach could play from this position are straight net shots, cross net shots, a push, a drive, or even a flat lift to put the opponent under much more pressure. As you can see in this rally, Endo and Watanabe are defending a lot, but they're lifting with purpose, playing a variety of other shots to continually move their opponents, and they're not just lifting for the sake of it. So if you, like Zach, find yourself lifting a lot from these positions, then really try to force yourself to play some of the shots Jenny just mentioned. Maybe say to yourself, you're only going to play a maximum of two lifts per rally, and this will force you to be more creative, because when you do play against better players who have big smashes and really dangerous attacks, then you simply can't just lift. Okay, next up we have Jaden from the USA. Now in all honesty, this guy could be really good. He's got some great strengths, especially his speed around the court, but there's one key part of his game we need to discuss. Yeah, like Zach, who lifted nine out of 10 shots, or Singh, who played six out of eight deceptive shots. Jaden hit 11 rear court shots in the clip that he sent us, and 10 of them were smashes. Yeah, that is a crazy ratio. And all of these statistics are showing that even if you don't realize it, you probably need to add a lot more variety into your game. Now, Jaden might be thinking, well, I won most of my points by smashing. And whilst that might be true, at the next level up, when he's playing a better opponent, he'd need to build the rally a lot more. So using drops, clears and half smashes and saving his full power smashes for when he's in a really good position. Yeah, so we've just watched 11 overhead shots from professional player Anthony Ginting, who's also got great speed around the court. And in this random selection of lifts, he hit three smashes, three clears and five drops. And you might be thinking, that's just Anthony Ginting's style. Well, Lee Zijia is known for his smashing, so we also watched 11 of his overhead shots. Here, he hit four smashes, two clears, and also five drops. Maybe not the biggest data set. I'm still recovering from studying 30 hours of Victor Axelsson's matches, but hopefully it proves a point. So if you rely a lot on your smashes to win points, next time you play a match in training, we challenge you to not smash. This will force you to use more variety in your game and outmaneuver your opponents to win points, rather than just hitting loads of smash winners. This will help you become a better badminton player in the long term, especially when you come up against better people. Exactly right. And having this one area to focus on when you're training or playing a match is so important. If you've got maybe five or six things to focus on, then you're not going to do any of them very well. Yeah, and we've definitely fallen into this trap in the past, but we were reminded about the effectiveness of only focusing on one or maybe even two things that are really important in Greg McEwen's great class on Skillshare, who, as it happens, are kindly sponsoring this video. In this class, Greg talks about finding out what's important to focus on to make the biggest improvements, and this is so applicable both on and off the court. So instead of Dow trying to improve every area of his game all at once, he could really focus on his midcourt. Or Zach could focus on not lifting everything. And Jaden could focus on not smashing everything. Yeah, so if you're interested in achieving more with less, as Greg would say, we would highly recommend this class on Skillshare. To watch this or any of the thousands of other inspiring classes, then head to the top link in the description below, where the first 1,000 people to use our link will get a free one-month trial to Skillshare with no strings attached. If this online learning platform isn't for you, then you can cancel without charge, but there's so many useful classes on there to learn from. And as you're still watching at this point in the video, we're quite confident that, like us, you're keen on learning and bettering yourself. So yeah, top link in the description and a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And also a huge thank you to all of you that sent us in a video to analyze. We're sorry that we couldn't include everyone. This wouldn't have been, would have been a very long video if we did, but we hope that you learned something. And if you did, We'll definitely do another one in the future. So that's it for this one. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and hopefully we'll see you in another video very soon where Jenny doesn't laugh on the outro. Bye.